Happy Tuesday, Eagles Nation. Welcome to today's episode of Weekly Chirp. Stephen Helm here alongside Tom Moresco. And, uh, well, that wasn't fun. No. That was not fun. Um, you know, Eagles dropping that tough one to Dallas. And really just came down to us not making one play. And we could have just made one play yeah. out of all the ones that kind of went wrong. You know, a different story. Yeah, but Kind of like we were saying all last year with Chip Kelly and yeah. Sam Bradford in town. Those guys are out of town. And there's no more scapegoats for this kind of stuff, yeah. and no one really knows who to blame. Now the blame's actually going on to the right people, to yeah. be honest with you. Yeah. Um, so so, I mean, well, it's still going on the coach, but, like, yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah. Definitely not all Chip, on the court, Chip right? could definitely be uh, could blamed, be. blamed for some of those, like, losses last oh, yeah, year for and sure. like that. But, uh, mm-hmm. you know, the players still dropping balls, still fumbling, mm-hmm. doing the same stupid stuff yeah, we were doing exactly, last year. Exactly. But it was all Bradford's fault last year. Now yeah. it's not Bradford's fault. Yeah, but yeah. the same thing's happening. Exactly, yeah. And, and that's good. I'm fine with yeah, whatever, I, whatever I, people want to say. You know, yeah. No, the, I, the, the reason we're bad is because, because of that. It's, yeah. it's that simple. It's not because a certain guy, one or two guys. It's because everyone has a collective unit that mm-hmm. if someone's making a mistake, the coach is putting the wrong guy in. You know, a lot of people said Wendell Smallwood came in cold and he fumbled because mm-hmm. he didn't have a carry the entire game. I think if you're a professional running back, you have to hold the ball no matter what. It's your job. So, yeah. uh, you know, uh, he comes in cold, uh, fumbles, but, you know, I just, I'm, I'm mad at him for fumbling. But, yeah, maybe Peterson should have stuck with Darren Sproles. You know, there's just different situations you, yeah. can, you can think about, a bunch of different type things. But, you know, obviously starting with the first half, Jordan Hicks makes that big interception yeah. in the end zone. <clears throat> this is kind of how the game really went. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we take it out. We, we uh, go get field goal before halftime. Yeah. We come out. We score. We're up. We're holding the lead into the fourth quarter. We're up, yeah. we're up 10. Up 10, yeah. And, um, and and then you make those mistakes. You got the Wendell Smallwood fumble we were yeah. just talking about. And then you got, get uh, out and kick a field goal. Yep. And then and and again, we, mar- they get the we ball march right down there. the field. Like, I, again, and then, yeah. Stupid. And then that, that play call on third and eight, you, all you have to do is gain at least zero yards on that play. Yeah. And you hit a forty-eight yard field goal for Caleb Sturt. Yeah. You get one, and does he make it? You can't say, but you you gotta trust that. Yeah, guy, and that right? guy's been killing it and all year. And you throw us, and you lose six yards. Yeah, throw and, pass me. And Caleb Sturt just hit a fifty-five yarder before halftime, and then yeah. they, they choose to punt with fifty-three. Oh, uh, for for a, instead of going for a fifty-three yarder. Yeah. So he hits one from longer. They they say no. I, let's I trust know. our defense, they, and I was okay with that at the time, but it's. If you look in hindsight, it's easy to say. And I, you know, I did, I did think, okay, we're trusting our defense. We're going to pin him back because I don't know about Sturgis. But looking back, it's obviously easy to say. You wish you would have just let him kick it. But honestly, it's it's the play call to that starting. Yeah, that's that, starting. You, know? you have to just run the ball there. You just yeah, have to. Sure. You have to understand the situation. You have to get that field goal there. Yeah. Because if you get that field goal there, the game's probably over. Yeah, exactly. You just you put them back down ten, mm-hmm. and then you're going to kick off to them, and they have to go down and get a touchdown, pretty yeah. much, or a field goal. But you know they just you can't yeah. just yeah you just it would have it, it would have just been that was huge, yeah. and, but Dak did seize the moment. I'll give him credit for that. Dak Prescott didn't look good all game, and then at the end of the game when the defense was gassed and the game shouldn't have been going on because it's like a ten point lead disappeared in three minutes. Yeah. And the next thing you know, the Eagles' defense is back on the field and they have to make plays now. And <clears throat> they've been playing their asses off all game, so <clears throat> can't put your defense yeah. in situations where they're going to be not able to take advantage. And we we did it so well. All throughout the game, and I think the offense is benefiting. You know, they're just not that good. And when you look into the fine details, we could talk about the one or two plays, but when you look into the fine details of the offense and why why we're losing games, why we just yeah. need one big play and we can't get it, it's because the receivers are dropping passes, like you yeah. said. It's because the runner, the running back, isn't in rhythm and he's fumbling, or you know, he's making mistakes. And um, you, you look, you look into uh, you know the, the play There's, calling. Yeah. And, no separation. It's just yeah, yeah. it's they, a combination of no just, separation of and, just and they don't catch and they you know they're they're not good. The coaches aren't calling the, aren't calling the best plays. They're not putting their and, team in a situation to win. You know, it's that's just the and, way it goes. And you're relying on your defense and special teams for field position. And yeah. the offense, they just they going on a long drive with nobody that can make a twenty yard play is yeah. just so hard because you need one of those in your big drives. You need big chunk plays at that time. Yeah. <clears throat> we, we don't the Eagles offense. That. Has not been able to deliver chunk plays at all, yeah. and the fact that they're four and three with this team, here's the silver lining: is why I'm confident, and I don't believe in moral victories mm-hmm. at all. Yeah, I'm not somebody that's sitting here happy because it's like, oh, well, we learned something. Like, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm not moral victories. I'm, that's not what I'm about. I want to win games, obviously. But when you look at this team, are they that good? 
No, they're not. They have realistically, they have a rookie head, a rookie quarterback with a first year head coach, yeah. and a bunch of receivers that are really young and and can't catch the ball. And it's yeah. like contagious at this point. An offensive line that's big. Now, granted, Big V played well last night. Played well against the Vikings. He struggled against the Redskins. Bottom line is that. Even with these guys playing well or whatever, this line still has so much yeah. room to improve. They're yeah. not that great an offensive line. They're, they're playing at a solid level, but they lost their best lineman. So you're looking at this thing and you're saying, how is this team even four and three? Four and, three and they're two, and all they are, if you boil it down really into the games, is you can say that there's moments where you're like, okay, if they didn't fumble there, they'd be fine. But yeah. they're making those mistakes and like, you got to clean it up, and if you can get a playmaker on offense that can pull that whole thing together, I really think, I really think that they can go to great heights. Yeah, I mean, I think you know the way I'm looking at it is you know you have the you know you have three and zero start, so that kind of like got our expectations you know up there, but same time you know we are four and three, and you know we just got to evaluate to see what we have. Yeah. Only you know we've only played seven games, and you know there's a lot yeah, to go. Seven you know, games. It's an up and down league, and. You know, yeah, things can change. You know, you yeah, can turn yeah. it on late in the season. That's why the division um, rivals are who they yeah. are. She got them again, and we got three, all three division rivals in at December home. at home. Yeah. So that's something to look forward to. Whether we're in the playoff hunt or not, I mean, look, I want to be in the playoff hunt just as much as yeah. anybody else's, but it just so happens that we have the hardest schedule in the NFL. We're playing every team off their bye week. This is going to be the mm-hmm. third straight week we play a team off their bye week going to the Giants. Yeah. We play Atlanta coming off their game on Thursday night. So it's just unfortunate how much rest teams have had against us. And I don't really think it matters that much, but it's just like, yeah. that's just like a, that's a weird matchup to have. Anytime you're playing a team off their bye, like, yeah. it's just, I mean, we lost off our bye. So, I mean, you can't really say yeah. anyth- anything for certain. And there's a lot of uncertainties and things like that. But bottom line is this team's a couple mistakes away, a couple cleaned up plays away, a couple playmakers away from being that 6-1 and one team that the Dallas Cowboys are right now too. And, you know, mm-hmm. I don't want to make excuses and say they're not playing well because they are, mm-hmm. but they're going to be benefiting off the 4-12 and 12 schedule. Yeah. And they're not a 4-12 and 12 team. Let's just yeah. put it that way. They suffered injuries that they weren't prepared to yeah. go into with last year, and that's why they were that bad. But this year they were prepared. They got guys like Ezekiel Elliott. They have their offensive line playing at a high level. They have, you know, their guy at quarterback in Dak Prescott. Yeah. The defense is playing pretty solid enough to where if their offense is putting out outputs like that, yeah. they can win games. And they're 6-1. They're, they're not making mistakes. They're not making the crucial ones. And we just gave them a game last night, yeah. <laughs> two nights ago. Whatever. I don't even know what day it is. I'm still pissed off, obviously, about the, about the loss. But... You know, I, I've really said all I could say. Got it all out, really. I mean, look, credit to Dallas. They're six and one. We're sitting there at four and three. We're still in striking distance of a playoff yeah. spot, even of the division. If you have a couple crazy losses with the Cowboys, but hey, look, the bottom yeah, line is, I think the guys just kind of mature, and yeah. you know, it's frustrating because yeah, they're not talented, but at the same time, they're you know, all these drop passes and the fumbles and stuff. That stuff that like. That's also just like not concentrating. That's not like having your head in the game. Like yeah, yeah some of these, some of these guys, some of these drops they're having are just like they're, these are cashable balls. Yeah, that, they're, and they're getting open. That, when they had, and they make and they're, they're, and they're in the NFL, You got to make that yeah. catch. It doesn't really matter how good or how bad. If you're in the NFL, some of these catches, these guys are open. Yeah, there's not a defender on them. They, you know, they're maybe they're a little towards the sideline, but they can get their feet bounds. Yeah, and these just, fumbles. Yeah, they got to just play. Yeah, carry the ridiculous. ball. Do your you know, job. Know the situations. Protect the ball is more important than getting the extra yard. Yeah, it really is about keeping your head in the game, like you and said. And it just it just seems like that some of these guys, their heads aren't in the game, and they you know they they can talk all they want, they have a good attitude, but it just seems like some of these guys are just not checked in mentally. Now, is that a reflection on coaching? Do you think? I think it's I think it's a little bit of everything. I think it's you know I think it's the I think it's the coaching. I think you have the young guys. Yeah. So I, I think it's a combination of stuff. You know, I think you know Doug Peterson, you know, is a a good players coach, his play calling has been a little susceptible, but at the same time, they don't really have any playmakers. So yeah. it's like, well, it's hard to judge. It's limited. Everything. It's very hard to judge everything. So you just kind of have to see how these guys are doing. And, you know, the thing with the offense is you really don't have a veteran leader on the offense. You really don't. No, you, have you don't really have a guy that's, that's, you know, that's going to step, step up and, and give me the ball. Yeah. Like, give me the damn ball right now. It's. This is a oh, fourth quarter. We need a first down. Yeah. Give that guy the ball. 
you don't have one of those guys right now. I mean, it's yeah, it's that simple. Yeah, and I, mean, I think that's a that's an issue. You need, and it's not even about really so much a veteran leader because I think Wentz is a great leader. He rallies yeah, I guys. He, I think they're confident. I think their confidence is up. But I, but you're saying like a go to guy, they, they have like an yeah. Alshon Jeffrey, yeah. man, in free agency. I'd love to get a guy like Alshon Jeffrey. Yeah, and I think that's something that you, you at all costs you kind of need to get that veteran because. You know, you gave Zach Ertz his money, and he's just like, you know, you're yeah. hoping he can be the security blanket, and that's just... And then I think in the third like, or fourth round, you got to draft a speed specialist receiver, yeah. and he can push guys like Aguilar and Huff for their job in camp, and yeah. you're obviously going to cut probably one of those two guys, and it would probably be Aguilar because Huff's a good special teamer. Yeah. So you get that. You get might that. be able to deal Aguilar for but, like a low you, you can't you can't draft a receiver this year and expect him to be an outside starter from yeah. day one because you don't that's not where your position is in the draft. You if you draft a guy in the third round, I mean yes, I know there's cases of where guys have done it, mm-hmm. but most likely you need just a stretch the field guy and then you yeah. need to pick up an outside receiver that can start. So it can be Doriel Green Beckham, an Alshon Jeffrey or a Terrell Pryor if he at least yeah. Cleveland. And then you have Jordan Matthews like you have to go get Carson Wentz. A weapon. Yeah, you yeah. have to. It's yeah. no question about it. This is becoming like exactly how the McNabb era started. Yeah. When McNabb didn't have one guy to throw the ball to the yeah. whole time. No, he didn't. But um Yeah, you know, the only thing you can say the only thing I can say that's different is that the guys that McNabb had were older. They mm-hmm. probably weren't as talented. But when we but got they, them, they weren't good. that old. Yeah, but it, it seems like these and they weren't that good. They weren't these that good, but they weren't making as many stupid <coughs> mistakes. I will yeah, say that true. these guys are better, but mm-hmm. they didn't. Those guys weren't dropping. Those guys, those were, guys were catching the ball yeah, when veteran, when they did have ve- some veteran sort of guys. It was more McNabb yeah. throwing it like their feet and stuff. Yeah, I mean they they wouldn't get open a lot, but when they had their when they actually did did get open, they caught the ball. Yeah. These guys aren't doing that. No, they're not. And, I mean, I would take Jordan Matthews over James Thrash yeah. you know, any day. But he's not but, catching the ball. But he's, sometimes he just drops the ball. Same with DGB. I so mean, it's like the mental stuff's got to clean up. And, yeah, these guys are young, but it's like it's just a DGB, lot of mental yeah, errors. Or they all, it's like contagious. When you're dropping yeah, balls, it's, even Ertz, Sproles was even dropping them last year. He's been a lot better this year, but... Um, he's dropped a couple even this year. I mean, it's just contagious when you yeah. start dropping balls. It's like nobody looking around. Nobody has confidence in each other. Yeah. And and they just they just no one's getting open. It's 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 bad, honestly. It's bad. I mean, we just talked about it forever. <laughs> so I mean, you know what it is. Room for up, improvement. Get but, a couple you know, receivers. Yeah. Um, you know, we're, we're already talking off season. I, I love the off season seeing the improvements. But I'm in I'm in season right now. Like you said, only seven games. Yeah. Got to just turn it on for the stretch. <laughs> we had a rough October, a good September. Now it's time. To go to November and December, and this is this is where yeah. the season pretty much begins because this is the stretch run. Everyone's kind of <laughs> knows who each other are at this point, and it's time yeah. to just keep going and keep playing. It's, it's, it's crazy because if you if you wouldn't beat the Giants in your five and three, you're in a pretty good <laughs> spot. <laughs> you're in a pretty good spot. It's so. a week to week lead. Yeah, it's it's, it's that weird. simple. So you know what, guys? Thank you for joining us. We'll see you on Thursday for Bird Buzz. Have a great week. Get over this loss as best you can. You know. So that's all we can really say Brutal, right now. But keep yeah. keep grinding and uh, keep the faith up. Go with uh, go with uh, the win over uh, NYG. I'm, yeah. uh, I'm gonna probably predict uh, my my score on on uh, Thursday on Bird Buzz, yeah. and uh, you guys can all look forward to that. And who knows what's gonna happen it's on Bird Buzz? Great. Well, I say we win. So uh, stay tuned, guys, and we'll see you then.